GameRanx presents the 10 best new iOS and Android games of March 2016. It's another month full of awesome mobile games worth your hard-earned dollars, so let's get started off with number 10. Dirac or Dirac or however you pronounce it is a very interesting Android puzzler game. It's got a very unique style and it's basically like you're a scientist looking at an old school sci-fi style computer monitor and you manipulate these little wire strands of like red and blue particles to solve puzzles. It's fun, it gets pretty addictive, and it's made by the guys who made Smash Hit and Does Not Commute. At $1.99 it's a little pricier than I'd expect, but it's just a good solid time killer. And at number 9 we have Dream Machine, the game, available for iOS and Android. We got a lot of puzzle games in this video. This one is a 3D geometric style puzzle game. You've seen these types of games before, you have to manipulate the environment to get the little robot character to survive across the path of the level. You rotate this three-dimensional puzzle to find different aspects and ways to cross the path, and everything is very Rube Goldberg mechanical-esque in terms of how you have to actually flip switches and pull levers and get gears turning to activate certain things. That's a cool enough approach for this style of game, but Dream Machine actually adds optical illusions and to the fray that make things very interesting and very fun. Not only that, but something you don't see in these types of puzzle games, Dream Machine actually has boss battle levels, which definitely shakes things up and sets it apart from some other games that are very easily comparable to this one. And at number 8 we have Retro City Rampage DX. Retro City Rampage has been on basically every single platform and now it's finally getting the iPhone and iPad port. The game is a really awesome combination of a bunch of different video game tropes and really kind of like a celebration of old school gaming. Packed into a really awesome pixelated top down shooter style game, very reminiscent of the early Grand Theft Auto games. It's quirky, it's tongue in cheek, it looks beautiful, it's got great music. The open world is pretty big and there's lots of different weapons and vehicles and ways to customize your character. I've played this on console and it is definitely worth jumping into if you haven't already. Try it out on mobile if you want, you might be surprised. And at number 7 we have King Rabbit. The name of the game here is basically to find gold and rescue bunnies. And while this looks like a totally childlike and really kiddie game, it's a very challenging puzzler. There's so much variation in every single level that really adds to the addictive factor here. There's things to activate, turrets to dodge, rabbit holes to hop in, spikes to navigate around, crowns to use, enemies to defeat, and it can get pretty violent. This little bunny can drown, catch on fire, get impaled by spikes, a lot of different things. This is just a good ass game and once you get past the art style that it looks a little too old school and muddy for my tastes. Once you get past the kitty style and the fact that you're a rabbit, you're gonna find a really fun, deep, and satisfying puzzler here. One that requires you to very much stop and think often and even plan ahead an entire level. And at number 6 we have Don't Die Mr. Robot. Yes, that is the name of this game, described as an arcade bullet hell fruit em up. As much as that sounds really silly, it is definitely that. It's a combination of a bunch of different things. Bullet hell style games, shoot em up style games, and even a little bit of Fruit Ninja. This is a fun, fast paced, and challenging game full of explosions and stuff. It gets pretty intense and nail biting at times, and there's over like 50 missions to play through. Not only that, but there's a lot of replay value here because you can play through a remix mode that changes up and makes every level even harder. The game also also has an arcade mode and a time attack mode, which is a lot of fun. This is one of the few games where I actually really like using the gyroscopic controls more than actual touchscreen controls. It all works because the controls and the gameplay here are just great. Playing this game is a lot of fun. And at number 5 we have Telepaint. This is an interesting game that's a combination of Fez, Portal, and even Splatoon. It's kind of like a puzzler where you control a little person who needs to carry around walking buckets of paint through a bunch of different portals getting through different levels. It sounds simple enough, but of course, like any good puzzler, things get more and more complex. The thing here though is that there are a hundred levels that is absolutely massive for the price of this game. And they're all divided up into six different game worlds that kind of give you a little variety. Something very much worth noting with this game is that it's being made by Acid Nerve, the guys behind Titan Souls. Titan Souls was totally awesome, and while Telepaint is definitely not as complex, it is definitely still a well designed and quirky fun puzzler. And at number four, we have Revenant Dogma. This is an iOS and Android JRPG that is totally dense, and you're definitely gonna get enough content worth your money here. This is just a big ass and wide open RPG style game. It's got a full world to explore, a bunch of different generated dungeons, battles and combat with 3D graphics that look very impressive and full of a bunch of effects, loot to find, and fully customizable weapons. So if you're a fan of Dragon's Quest and stuff like that, Revenant Dogma might be worth your money because you just get a lot of RPG gameplay here. If you're just a fan of dungeon crawling till your eyes fall out, this is gonna be up your alley. And at number three, speaking of RPGs, we have Adventure to Fate, Quest to the Future. 
<laughs> this is a totally ridiculously titled JRPG style game that is incredibly old school and totally worth playing. This one is a dungeon crawler through and through with intense character creation with six different classes and variations within them. There's things to loot, craft, and find in treasure chests and over 170 different enemy types. There's a bunch of different environment types and just a lot of gameplay here in terms of exploring and battling. And what I love here is that the interface is just so old school. It reminds me of a classic PC RPG. And honestly, that's why I love it so much. And another fun fact, the entire game has voiceover functionality, meaning that blind people can play this game. How cool is that? And at number two, we have Super Arc Light. I've been playing this game a hell of a lot and I love it. It's a great combination of like super hexagon, kind of crossed with Geometry Wars, and it is just such a great action shooter. This thing is like a pick up and play addiction that you just can't stop playing and you can't put down. I cannot stress enough how much it reminds me of Super Hexagon, not only in style and sound, but in just how much I could not get my hands away from it, despite it being incredibly hard. As you play through and succeed, you unlock different weapons. There's a bunch of little different enemy types that fly towards you. You. And not only is the game incredibly fast and challenging, but if you're competitive, there are leaderboards. Super Arc Light is just an awesome blast of intense old school retro arcade action, and I can't get enough of it. And at number one, we have White Day. This is a pretty big game. This is a fully fleshed out survival horror style game with 3D graphics and controls. It's actually a port of a little known PC game from 2001. If you've ever been a fan of Clock Tower or Fatal Frame, this game is for you. It's very much distinctly Asian style horror, which I think is even more terrifying than Western horror. And it's just a lot of fun, especially if you play with headphones. It looks great, it plays pretty good, and you basically just have to play as a student who runs away from scary things. It sounds Sounds really simple, but it's highly enjoyable because there is a story here that is pretty easy to grasp. There's even multiple endings too, warranting multiple playthroughs if you really want to get your money's worth. This game was a cult hit for a reason, and now you have your chance to try it on mobile. You probably should. So guys, those were 10 of the best new iOS and Android games of March 2016. These are the free and paid games we think are worth playing overall, and we wanna know what games you guys are playing on your phones down in the comments below. As always though, you know the deal. If you found a new game from this video that you really like playing, maybe click the like button, because that helps us out. And if you're new, you should subscribe because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.